Hi everyone, this is Pastor Lindaria and welcome back. Today we will be studying about Abraham. And I know we know that Abraham is the father of nations. And God set me with that. And we're going to be in two different texts today. Today we're going to be in Genesis 12 and then we're going to come over to Galatians 3. And as I was reading this, I started shouting in my room with elation because God was speaking in real time. And he's saying that we have some things that we are owed and he's about to give it to us in real time. So if I was you, I would begin to give God thanks right now, wherever you are. God is saying that he is about to bestow to his children their birthright. And if I was going to have a title for this sermon, it would be Seed. S-E-E-D, seed. And you're about to understand in one second because God, glory, he spoke to me and I had to get up late in the midnight hour and read and study and write this message down. So I speak life over your day. I pray that it is amazing just like you. So we're gonna come to Genesis 12 and Father God, right now, I just thank you for the reading of the word. I just thank you for um, to adding all of you and taking me out, Father God. I don't want any of me, all of you, Father God, and help me deliver this word as you see fit. Wisdom, you're welcome into the room, and let's get this word, Father God. I am excited for this word. I am excited for this word, and it is in your mighty name. I pray, Jesus Christ, amen. You guys ready for this word? Let's get it. So it says in Genesis 12, now... Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Abram, because his name wasn't Abraham just yet. Abraham did a name change. It was Abram and it went to Abraham. But get this. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make your name. Uh, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great. And you should be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. Let me read that again because I need you to sit with it. Because it might seem really fast. But that little segment is very weighty. It says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great. And you should be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And it says, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's what God just told him. Now, God gave him a task. And then he gave him what was going to happen when he completes the task. He says, I need you to get up and go out of a land. Get out of your father's house, go out of your country, leave your family. And when you do that, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who cur curse those who curse you. And you and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Get that. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. I don't think that you understand the severity of what Abraham, the weight that Abraham carried. And I know we grew up with the song growing up in childhood. Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. He made Abram to Abraham, Sarai into Sarah and made her mother of nations and made him father of nations just by the sheer word obedience. Abraham or Abram could have been like, I don't, I don't know if this is you, God. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not going to leave my father's house. I'm not going to go into a country I don't know, into a land I don't know. I'm not going to do that, God. But he heard God and he was obedient. It said that obedience is better than sacrifice. He heard God. He was obedient to God and he went. What's getting ready to happen to you next is going to be based off of your obedience and your faith. Come with me over. Come with me over to Galatians. Galatians 3. Now, this is a very lengthy read, but I promise you're going to leave blessed. I, I know you're going to be shouting just like I did. Because it said, 
Abraham was the father to many nations. Sarah was the mother of many nations. So we come over to Galatians, and I'm going to be in Galatians 3. And I think I'm going to start with verse 4. And I'm just going to be jumping around for a little bit. But make sure you just catch with me. If I was you, I would go read all of Galatians. It's literally six chapters, but it's really good substance in it. It even talks about the fruit of the Spirit in here. So Galatians 3, 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for his righteousness, therefore know that only those are those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. I need you to pay attention very closely to that because he's telling you who you are. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus came down here to die for our sins and that he rose again up on the third day? Do you believe that God sent his only begotten son down here to die for our sins? That we may not perish but have everlasting life? If you believe, you are already blessed. Let me go back so I can bless you with what just happened here. It says, just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for his righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. If you believe and if you are a son of faith, son being genderless, then you are already blessed. Hmm. It says that you're a son of Abraham. Verse 8, chapter 3, verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that, that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In all the nations, and in, in you all the nations shall be blessed. Excuse me. It said, And the scripture, and the scripture foreseeing God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you, all nations shall be blessed. We know that Abraham was prophesied to by God saying that this is what's going to happen. You're going to be father to many nations, mother to many nations for Sarah. And that came to pass. But you having faith alone makes you a son of Abraham. And sons of a father who has an inheritance makes you what? I'm going to get to that in a second. Let's keep going. Um, so we're going to come down to 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having became a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. The blessing of Abraham might come up, come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in, in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, Yet it is confirmed. No one annuls or adds to it. Let me keep going. 16. Now to Abraham and his seed. S-E-E-D. No S. Not plural. And Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to the seeds, S-E-E-D-S, as of many, but as of one. And to your seed, S-E-E-D, who is Christ. Catch this now. And this I lay that the law which, which was 430 years later cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ. That it should make the promise no effect. Nothing can annul this. No law, no governor, no president. Nothing can supersede what God has already promised to his seed. S-E-E-D. Let me keep going. For if the inheritance is the one, for if, for if the inheritance is the one of law, it is no longer um, of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Come on. What purpose then does the law serve? It, it, it was added because of the transgressors to the seed, S-E-E-D, should come to whom the promise was made. I'm, I'm about to break it down. I'm not going to get excited. 
and it was appointed through the angels by the hand of the mediator. Now, a mediator does not mediate for only one, but God is the one. Let me get back to this. Let me go back to that little substance. Sit with Galatians 3, 17, 18, and 19. Because the law might seem like it's holding up your blessings. People might seem like they're in their way, in your way of your blessings. And it might be taking a little bit longer. But it's all for a reason. See, he said, I had to implement that law because of your transgressors. See, when it comes to inheritance and when it comes to heirs, that's what it is. When it comes to heirs, it gets messy. Whenever someone perishes and you have to have a, um, what is it? Um, a soul, um, I can't think of the word. Anyway, when you have the person that's put over it, they have, um, <coughs> I'm sorry. They have the choice of saying, oh, this is what's in the will. You can get this. You can get this. <coughs> I'm sorry. You can get all of these things. But God says, I put that in place because I have a mediator that is going to come in and going to give you what you deserve. Now, 21, is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given, which could have been given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. So then I'm going to come over here. It says, but the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith, by the faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would which would afterwards be revealed therefore the law was with our tutor to bring us G, to bring us christ that we might be justified by faith but after faith has come we no longer are under a tutor come on for you are all the sons of god through faith in christ jesus for as many of you were baptized into christ have put on christ there is neither jew nor greek there, uh, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Understand that. <clears throat> and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Mm, I'm, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. Chapter four. I'm going to get this last little snippet. Now I say, that the heir, as long as he is the ch long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under the guardians and stewards until the appointed time by the father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Listen, <clears throat> let me clap this up real quick. Because you are a child. The inheritance had to be stored. People had to come and steward or angels had to come and steward your money and steward your inheritance. But now that you are an adult and you have been baptized by the blood of Jesus, by the holy water that you came up out of and you are reborn, you are now considered Abraham's seed, S-E-E-D. You no longer need the guardianship. You no longer need the stewardship. You no longer need the tutors. You no longer need the mentors. God is about to give you what is rightfully yours. My God, you've waited long enough. You toiled long enough. You watched others get what they were supposed to have and you were sitting around like, God, I know I'm in the waiting room because if others is getting their blessings, that means you're somewhere in the area. And God, I'm crazy enough to believe that you have the inheritance with my name on it. God, I hear about these kingdom blessings. God, I hear about these showers of blessings. God, I wait in water. God, I wait on you. God, I pray. I meditate day and night. God, I know. God, I know that I know that I know that you are real. Can't no devil in hell tell me that you're not. And I don't care what circumstance comes in my lifetime. I don't care who goes and who leaves. God, I know that you are real. And I know that you will never leave me nor forsake me. I know you will never abandon me, God. It is you that sustained me when I didn't even know who I was. 
when the world got so big and hurricane life began to hurricane life and I thought that I was going to lose my mind, but God, you kept me. You kept me, God. And I know you kept me for a reason. I know you got to rhyme for your reason, God. And I know that I am somebody. I might not know my purpose yet, but I know that I am somebody, God. I know that I know that I know. God, I know. I can't shake this feeling. I know that I'm called. I know that I'm chosen for such a time as this. I might not see it, God, but I know it. But that's just what faith is. And it says that if you have that faith, then you are Abraham's seed. Not seeds, but seed. And it's the reason why he didn't make that plural. Because each and every one of us have our own inheritance. And we don't have to go fight somebody else for it. And we don't have to dim someone else's light for us to shine to get it. And we don't have to throw somebody under the bus for us to get it. It is already promised to each and every one of us. That's why God didn't put the S on the end of seed. And that's why he specified not seeds with the S, but S-E-E-D because it is tailor made for you. God is not a man, so he cannot lie. He can do many things, but lying is not one of them. And he has a kingdom inheritance with your name on it. And I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't care if you're facing eviction. I've been facing it before too, but God came through. See, God loves to get the but God moment in your life. And I challenge you to give God that option. Give God the but God in your life. When everything seems to be to, like piling up and bills and babies and divorce and jobs and firing and all of these things and the cars breaking down and people turning their backs on you, I need you to say, God, only you. God, if it wasn't for you, I would lose my mind. God, I know that you're going to show up in, in the circumstance that looks like it's for, unforeseen in my life. It looks like it's about to take me over, God. It looks like I'm about to lose it, God. It looks like I might not be the man for the job. It looks like the job is trying to fire me, God. I don't know what I'm going to do, God. They're saying I got 30 days. They're saying I got three days. I ain't got no food to feed my kid, to feed my kids, God. I don't know where my help is going to come from. God, in the Bible, it says I look to the hills from which comes my help. Well, God, I'm looking to the hills and I still don't see that help God where are you God and he's laughing he's laughing because through all of that stuff you're going through you still believe you still believe he has a blessing with your name on it he has a kingdom inheritance with your name on it you don't have to fight for nobody you don't gotta fast your way into it you can't do more, more, more sacrifice than obedience. See, if Abraham didn't leave when God told him in Genesis, and I'm going to read it one more time before I get off because I think that it just needs to be read. If Abraham didn't leave where God had told him, if he didn't leave everything, Genesis 12. <clears throat> now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country. He gave him strict instructions. He said, get out. And I don't know where you are and I don't know what God is telling you. But if God is telling you to go, run. If he's telling you that he's going to supply all of your needs, believe it. If he's telling you like he told Abraham, get out of your country from your family. If he's telling you to get out of, your, out of that country and out of your family, move from state to state, move from city to city, get that U-Haul. Get that stuff together. God told me a year ago to pack my bags, baby. I had no reason to pack my bags. I had no reason. I had no destination. But I began to pack my house up piece by piece, box by box. And I got a knock at the door. And they said, hey, are you looking for a house? When God tells you to do something, it might not make sense. And it might look crazy to man. But to God, it looks very sane. To God, he starts saying, ooh, now I can use you. Now I can use you. I got your promise. I got your kingdom inheritance. You are the heir. I got your throne. I just need you to show me that you're ready. And when you show God that you will do obedience better than anything else, he says, ooh, my child is ready. He said to Abraham, <clears throat> get out of your country. 
from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, Abram, Abram at the time didn't know. He said to a land that I will show you. God, I've been looking. I don't know what land you looking for, but rent high, bills high, chicken high, eggs high, everything high, God. To a land that you don't, that you'll show me. God, can you show me the master plan? God, can you show me the blueprint? God, can you show me something? Can you show me the estate? Because I don't know where I'm going, God. But I trust you. And God is saying, faith. If you are seed of Abraham, have faith. Even though you can't see it, have faith. The word for the rest of 2023 is faith. If you can't see it, believe it. If you're dreaming it and the dreams look bigger than you, believe it. God is showing you those dreams for a reason. He's giving you those desires for a reason. He's giving you what to dream. He's giving you what to desire. Because along that road is a land that God will show you. You have an inheritance with your name on it. He says, I will make you a great nation. Mm, my God. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. So not only are you going to get that, but everyone that walks around and shows you kindness, everyone that believes in you and your abilities to see what God says and to follow you and say, this is what God said. This is God, good and faithful servant. We're going to follow you wherever you go. And whatever you need, we're going to be a blessing to you. However we can help you get to your next destination, we're going to help you. God says, I will bless them. They're going to get a blessing just for being in the presence and just for being obedient and helping one of God's good and faithful servants. The blessing isn't just for you. It's for everyone that dares to help you and believe in you. And on top of that, he says, and I will curse those who curse you. There are going to be a lot of naysayers in your lifetime. You already experienced some of them because you wouldn't be chosen if you haven't ran into those people. The people that say that you can't do it. The people that say you just like your mama them, your daddy them. You ain't nothing. You come from nothing. You come from poverty. You come from lack. Who are you to come speak? What is your credentials? Who ordained you? Who said a woman can't preach? Who told you you could get up on this platform? What do you got? Who chose you? Who called you? Who ordained you? Those people. God says, I will curse those who curse you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This blessing that God is getting ready to do for you is bigger than you. It's bigger than you. And I need you to understand that your faith is about to move mountains. That faith of that baby mustard seed, they say. If you have faith of a mustard seed, you can say that this mountain moved from here to there and it will be moved. If you have faith, then you are the seed of Abraham and you have an inheritance with your name on it. That means you are heir to a throne. And since you are heir to a throne, you have kingdom inheritance with your name on it. And remember that song growing up? God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with my name on it. With my name on it. You better start shouting your name, baby, because God has a blessing with your name on it. God has a blessing with your name on it. And before I get off, before I sound out, you better be shouting your name wherever you are. If you're on the bus, if you're in a car, if you're walking, if you're jogging, if you're sitting in, just tuning in, you better begin to shout. God has a blessing with my name on it. I declare and decree that I will receive everything that has my name on it. And everything attached to me is going to win. Everything attached to me is going to win. God's got a blessing. Hey, God's got a blessing. With your name on it. With your name on it. You better be saying your name. Because you are royalty. It is in your DNA. It is a reason why he didn't say seeds. Because this blessing that God has for you is hand tailored. They can't replicate this or duplicate this. This is your blessing. You are chosen for such a time as this. Your faith has moved God. He's seen you in the low days. He's seen you in the high days. He's seen you in the weeping days. And you just kept saying when you couldn't go on, you just kept saying joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. God, I know, I know, God, I know, God, I know. Trouble don't last always, God, I know. He saw that waiting process. 
And because you wasn't arrogant and boastful in your waiting process, and because you wasn't like, when is this going to be over, God? When is it my time, God? Another prophecy, God, I can't take it. If another prophet prophesied one more thing and it don't come to pass, I'm going to lose my marbles, God. I don't want to hear it no more. God, I can't take it no more. Because you didn't sound like that in the waiting room, because you sound like this, God, I don't know when, but I know you're going to do it. God, I don't know how, but I know you're going to do it. God, my bills is piling up, but God, you said if it's your will, it's your bill. And God, I know you didn't bring me this far to only bring me this far. And God, I see all these other people getting their blessings, so I know you're in the building. And God, I know you're getting ready to bless me. I'm crazy enough to believe that you're getting ready to bless me, God. I'm crazy enough to believe. And God, I'm thankful if you don't do anything else for me, Father God. You gave me breath in my lungs, so I'm already blessed, God. So thank you, God, in advance for what you're doing in my life and through my life and on me, God. God heard that. He heard that humbleness. It says in the Bible that the meek shall inherit the earth. And because you came from that place of meekness and humbleness and understanding, God is saying, I am about to unleash blessings that you do not have room to, in, to do yourself, to maintain. He says, I'm getting ready to unleash blessings with your name on it. You are Abraham's seed of promise. And my promise always comes to pass. All day long, I need you to say, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. The blessings is yours. It is yours for the taking. You don't have a moderator anymore. You don't have a mentor anymore. You don't have a steward anymore. God is getting ready to single-handedly come down and give you what is rightfully yours. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with your name on it. With your name on it, with your name on it, hey, with your name on it, you better declare and decree that God has a blessing with your name on it. I love you all. I pray that this message was a blessing. I pray that it gave you a little bit of hope in a dark place, that it restored your faith. God is about to do something so major in your life if you will only believe. My name is Lindaria Watts. You can find me on TikTok at Original Pastor Lindaria. You can find me on Facebook, Verified, under Lindaria Watts. You can find me on Instagram under Lindaria Watts. I pray peace over your life and may your day be blessed and highly favored. And may God give you a divine visitation that will show you that you are his. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with your name on it. With your name on it, with your name on it. I love you all, and I pray peace over your life. Have a great day. <laughs>